day, I bang a button. What is up? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. So, my hope is that today's video will be the very first this is a quick video that is actually a quick video. So, someone sent me a message asking about sending bangs out or sort of controlling other things when audio is over a certain threshold. So, this is what we look here at, uh, triggering a bang when sound is over a certain threshold. And what I've got here is this is just a contact mic that's being tapped by someone and it's coming down here going through a low res which is uh, dropping off all the high tones for us so you can see we're just ramping it here it goes through a ramp which then just smooths the downward uh, downward signal and then we pass it through a clip and you can see the result of the clip here so everything that is above our clip at the moment which is 1 uh, 0 0.13 uh, is triggering it's very very small in this second spectral and then it goes into a snapshot that's constantly being banged and if it's greater than zero then our bang actually bangs super uh, so simple as that when someone's tapping this microphone and it's over this the required threshold you can see i can turn this all the way down and it'll just constantly bang or i can turn it all the way up over one and we won't hear a thing uh, the specific question was around tapping a microphone so getting people to actually do things, but you can also do it with music. So if I play this song, and we go down around 40, I think is the sweet spot here. You can see when our bass drum kicks, we get a, we get our bang coming out here. And this bang, and you can use this to literally bang anything so if we bring in let me get this short clips these are pretty terrible let's go a bit longer there you go that's quite nice so let's bring that in all you need to do is pass out a one message uh, i'm gonna do loop zero just quickly to turn that off plug that in there plug that in there and now play this turn down our threshold until it matches the level we need uh, what we're going to do is I then turn down the volume on our input source Now every time that microphone's being tapped, the threshold's being reached, our bang's coming out, you can hear snares firing. How good is that? One thing you would need to note, uh, let me stop this before I go crazy. Uh, obviously one thing to note with that is if you do it into a, a message, a, a play thing like that, it will constantly resend the play message. So you can have issues where you, you run samples over each other and it gets a bit messy memory wise. But apart from that, let's have a look at how to make it. Uh, and there's probably other ways to do this. The, the person I was speaking to was talking about the, the uh, bonk object, but I just I couldn't find enough information and I really don't understand what I was doing. Uh, and I was trying to get this video made in, today. So I apologize for not using bonk. But first thing I want to do is I'm going to bring in my signal. So all I did was downloaded a, a clip of someone rubbing their microphone or tapping their microphone. I'm going to plug that into the gain. Uh, give me an easy DAC. And then that just sounds like this. So it's literally just the sound of someone tapping a microphone. Super. First thing I'm going to pass that into is a spectroscope so I can visualize it. I like seeing things, I'm a very visual person. And then I'm going to pass that into a low res. I'm just going to filter it. And the reason I'm going to filter it is we, we really don't want the high end. What we're trying to get here is uh, it's a lot easier for us to track the 
the, the lows on this. So by low pass filter, I'm going to do about this. It's going to pat, cut off everything over 250 hertz. Uh, so basically it's only going to let 280 hertz and lower pass through with a 0.8 sort of cutoff. Pass that in here, duplicate the spectro, and already you can see the difference. So we, we have only this little section here, which is 0 to 250 hertz, there or thereabout. So already we've tidied up a lot, and you can see where we're going. All we're going to do is look for things above sort of this midline here. When it crosses that threshold, we say that yes, something's to trigger. Gonna use an ABS here, an absolute signal, so just we don't want any negatives, we want only the pure positive, otherwise it can get really confusing. And I'm gonna ramp smooth it just to make the Ramp smooth 0 to 50 means that the, the signal when it's on its way down, so it's gone up and it's coming down, is is smoothed over 250 samples, which means that if something does break our our limit, break the, the ceiling we set, it'll then come past it again slowly, and it just means that our, uh, our snapshot has time to pick up. So I'll plug that in there. And this is... I'm just going to move this spectra down there. Uh, you won't, you, it's very hard to visualize, but it, it does mean that when our signal is dropping again, it, uh, it's doing it a bit slower. But 250 samples is nothing. Now we're going to, to clip the message. And we're going to do it by 0 0.5 by default and then to 1, because this runs on a float. And clip is exactly what it sounds like. Clip is going to put a ceiling onto our, our signal. And to get use out of this, we are then going to minus tilde 0 0.5, put in a float, and then our lower value of our clip and the subtraction value of this go together. So what we're getting out now at the bottom here is the difference between our clip and the low end that we've set, which means that only values between what value we set here and 1, so 100% essentially, is going to pass through. We can visualize this if we do a scope. So you can see here all the little peaks, if I set it to zero, are noises over our threshold. But at the moment we've got it to allow everything to go through. But the more I turn this up, the more you'll see that it starts to flatten out. Remember, we've already ramped and filtered it up here, so we've cut out a lot of the noise that we don't want anyway. And I know for this sample, about 15 is the magic threshold. You can see that we get these really nice strong peaks. There is a little bit of repetition, but that's okay for the purposes of this. And then all we need to do is snapshot. So we've got our signal, but let's turn it into something that we can actually use. And snapshot needs to be banged, so we're Normally you would bang it with the signal coming in, but that's not reliable enough because we either have nothing or signal, but we need it to always be reading. So I'm going to Metro 30, toggle, into the top of our snapshot. And I'm just going to, uh, I control and clicking here on my Mac and make sure that active is checked because if active isn't checked, then snapshot won't do anything. Now, if you plug something in a message into the bottom of snapshot, you will see that we'll get a value every time that one of these peaks appears. And you can see that it's giving us lots of random values, that's just because it's turning its signal noise, so it's actual, the audio back into a, a value of something again. But we don't need to worry about the value. All we need to worry about is if that value is greater than zero. And make sure you put in this point here, otherwise it, it, the floating value won't register. If it is greater than zero, then send a bang. Now make an obnoxiously big bang, or a button, plug that in. Now every time that your noise, whatever it may be, passes the threshold, then you will receive a signal. And as you saw in my original demo, you can use literally anything. So if I move that out of the way and bring in, let's get some techno, techno, techno. There we go. So you can see EasyDAC is still in the patch, not connected in any way, but still banging because I know that there's drums sort of straight away in this song. And you can sort of hear that if I hook it up. 
threshold's a bit high. That's good, I'm happy with that. And that's just a really quick look at how to trigger a bang when sound is over a threshold. I hope that's been useful. I hope you can put this into your patch. This is a, a little sequence that I love and I use all the time when I'm doing reactive visuals and things like that. Uh, so hopefully you can start putting it into your patches. Thanks a lot.